So now that we have the memory in place and all that uh, stuff out of the way, we're going to go ahead and install the CPU. Now this is a uh, what's called a ZIF socket or zero insertion force. And what that means is that there's a little lever on the side that we just lift it up. And what's going to happen is the CPU will just drop in. You should require zero pressure or anything to insert this uh, into the socket. It's also keyed so it can only go in one way. Now if you look really closely, there's a little uh, triangle over here in the corner of the socket. And that's going to align up with the little corner marked on the CPU. And so that should just drop right in like that with zero insertion force needed. And then I just close the lever and we're in good shape. Now, speaking about CPUs for a moment, in this particular case, I'm using a Phenom 2 or an AMD Phenom 2 uh, processor. And this is a 65 watt quad core processor. Now, the reason why I chose this particular CPU is one is because it's low power at 65 watts, so it requires not as, as robust of a cooling solution. That means I can turn fans slower and, and things like that because it's not going to dissipate as much power. Yet it's still a quad core processor, so therefore I've got plenty of horsepower to be able to handle all the needs that the HTPC would have. So for example, with a quad core CPU, I can do uh, all sorts of encoding and decoding and stuff on the CPU. It's, it's got plenty of horsepower for Blu-ray playback. It's got plenty of horsepower to be able to stream content to extenders, for example, all while uh, meeting all the needs of the home theater PC's uh, requirements. So it's a great CPU for this kind of application. Again, it's all about the power that's uh, required, and so lower power parts are, are more ideal for a home theater space as opposed to a high-end gaming box where you need a lot more robust and powerful processors for those types of applications. So now that we've got the CPU installed, uh, we're nearing the final stages of assembling of all the hardware, and so we're going to install the heatsink next, and then connect up the chassis fan, and we'll uh, pretty much be done. Now one thing to note is I don't have any thermal grease yet or thermal interface material installed onto the processor. Most heat sinks will already have it pre-installed on the bottom of the heat sink that interfaces with it. So just make sure that you, before you uh, install your heat sink, make sure that it does have the thermal interface material. If it does not, make sure you put some on before you install the heat sink. Since my heat sink already does have it installed, I'm not going to worry about that at this point in time because I already know it's there. So in this particular case, I'm using the Noise Limit Silent Flux uh, Media Cooler. Again, this particular heatsink was chosen because it's got very, very quiet operation and it can handle the thermal requirements of the 65 watt processor with these. And so it's also in a very low profile form factor, so it allows me to fit inside this chassis. You'll find in some cases with lower profile chassis like this, there are some heat sinks that may not fit um, and allow you to be able to put the lid back on. In this particular case, this is a low profile cooling solution, so it fits in there very, very easily. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and install that. And then make sure I connect up the fan to the fan header on the motherboard. And the heat sink's installed. So with the fan done, we've got the support bracket down. We'll finish screwing that in. Now, some chassis may or may not have the same process. There are some things that I didn't uh, finish connecting up on this. For example, some of the remote control wires on the, on the front chassis would still need to be done with this particular chassis. But overall, conceptually, this is the essential process of building a home theater PC based upon our uh, MSI MediaLive Diva platform, or the MAUI platform as we like to call it. And it gives you everything that you need. It's one box. It's your DVD player, your Blu-ray player. It can be your stereo amplifier, your TV tuner, your music jukebox, your video jukebox all with one box that can sit underneath your TV with one remote control. Makes for a very, very nice solution for entertainment and media type content.